Hello YouTube, my name is Joe. This will be a review video on my personal opinions on my Zandu Z03 electric scooter. I'll try to touch on subjects that I think everybody will be interested in. And if I leave something out that you would like to know about, please ask me in the comments and I'll get back to you with whatever I can. Okay, so why did I buy this electric scooter? Well, I've had motorcycles, electric bikes, other electric scooters, lots of toys. And I have a reoccurring bulging disc in my back that gets aggravated every so often. And after riding electric scooters, I realized when you have a sore back, it's way better than sitting on a seat and re-aggravating your back. Um, previously, I've had a couple smaller scooters. This one's got uh, 2,800 watts in each wheel, so it's got two-wheel drive. And it's definitely way stronger than just a single wheel drive scooter. Um, it is kind of intimidating at first, but after a week or two of driving it a few times, you get used to it decently. Um, it's got a lot of torque. Uh, there's a very fine line of going smooth and easing into speed and then it just jerks you all at once there's only like you'll be going smooth smooth and then wham it just wants to throw you back so that does take a little bit of getting used to but once you got your back foot on the foot rest and brace yourself it's not a problem it actually gets really fun once you uh get your balance right on this thing um, so let's see, uh, I'll talk about the brakes. The brakes are hydraulic. They do have discs front and back. They do have hydraulic oil in there. Um, they're very sensitive and they stop really well. They haven't made any noise at all. Um, I did swap the cables over because, I don't know if it's because this thing is made in another country or whatnot, but here in the United States, I am completely used to having the right side brake be the rear wheel. And it was vice versa on this thing when it had arrived. And when you're riding something with this much power, you wanna go back to what you know and stop on what you're used to and how you're used to stopping. It was getting very difficult when I'm going on like steep hills and dirt and stuff like that and you have to ride the brakes down the hill. I would be getting confused a couple times and it was just like, I'm not dealing with this anymore, I'm swapping. So it was just uh, an electronic sensor in the bottom of each one and then the hydraulic fluid line basically just swap those okay so I have done a few aftermarket uh, things to it just to make my experience better but I'll get to that so um, let's talk about uh, the handlebars the handlebars have a, a nut right in the middle here which you can unscrew and fold them down in half which I find to be very convenient to put this thing in your vehicle. I tried to fit it without the handlebars collapsed and it uh, didn't seem to fit so well. It was scraping on the headliner of the vehicle and whatnot. Um, the handlebars are very tight and strong. When this thing had first arrived, I knew it was a foldable scooter. That's one of the reasons why I bought it, but I had to go over every single nut, screw, and bolt on this thing. It was put together, but kind of loosely, and I would imagine that stuff gets uh, loosened during shipping and whatnot, so that's nothing to hold against the manufacturer, I would say, but every single screw had to be tightened down manually. And after that, 
the handlebars don't wiggle at all. They're super strong. And I'm very pleased with that because I've had some weak stemmed scooters in the past. Um, included into the steering, I had purchased this directly from Zondu on Amazon, the steering damper. Uh, why I bought it was for stability. I don't know if anybody has experienced getting wobbles on a loose steering wheel, but it's not fun and it's very dangerous. If you have any reason why you're riding and you have to use one hand to scratch your head or anything and you have to have just one hand on the handlebars, the risk of you leaning to one side or the other and losing control is significantly higher than if you have this on there offering tight uh, hydraulic stabilization back and forth. I uh, got a hundred miles on it right now and right out of the box I put the steering damper on. I uh, drove it about 80 miles and decided to take the steering damper off because I know you gain a lot of turning radius when it is not on. So I gave it a shot to see how I felt about it and it doesn't feel sturdy. I would highly recommend adding a steering damper. It does cost like 70 bucks. It's a little bit extra, but totally worth it. Um, let's see what else. Um, Zondu's customer service really helped me out when I did get this thing in the mail. It had uh, bent headlamp brackets and they were pointed in different directions. I emailed them. They sent me two new brackets and they gave me a free set of brake pads just for my trouble. So that was awesome of them. Um, let's see. Oh, back to the handlebars. They are adjustable, by the way. There are three slots where you could put a pin through. Uh, it's just got a little pin with a spring, but there's also a clamp here, just like on most bikes and scooters. Uh, let's see. The power of the battery and the longevity of the battery. I've gotten approximately, I've charged this thing only two times and it wasn't even halfway drained. And like I said, I got a hundred miles on it. The battery seems to last a really long time. It didn't even seem to get uh, weaker to the point when the battery was about halfway down when I decided to uh, charge it again. Okay, so the battery I think is great. I'm not using this thing as a commuter. It's strictly for recreational fun, uh, mostly grass riding and dirt riding and off-roading. I'm not going to be taking it on the streets and commuting and going even more than I'd say 30 or 35 miles an hour. I guess this thing does in the 50s, but the fastest I've gotten it to is about 35 or 40. And uh, that's fast enough for me on this thing. Let's see, uh, it's got side lights on it. It's also got lights on the front and back of the deck, which act as turn signals and brake lights. It has two charging ports. It came with two chargers, and this is the first time I've ever gotten anything with chargers that had cooling fans built into the chargers, so they actually don't get hot while you're charging, which is huge. I th just thought that was awesome. Um, suspension. It's got an adjustable spring in the back, and I haven't removed those boots, but it's got a couple shocks in the front. I don't think they're adjustable, uh, but the cushion on this thing is good. I'm about 170 pounds, 175, and uh, I have had no issues with stiffness in the suspension or it hurting my wrists or anything like that. It seems to be cushioned really well. Um, let's see. I did 
buy a footrest aftermarket. The deck here is 20 inches by 11 inches. I bought this thing. Uh, some dude on the internet sells them. Uh, they're 3D printed. It's like 50 bucks, but it adds an extra seven inches to your leg room, which is huge if you're six foot tall like I am. So, uh, what else? There were turn signals all the way around. I kept kicking the back ones and they were just, they stuck out here. I removed them when I installed this thing. I just feel that they were unnecessary if I'm not using it on the street as a commuting vehicle or anything like that. So <clears throat> I personally took them off. Plus these things down here act as turn signals and brake lights anyways. What else? All right, so uh, it's got a really loud horn. <laughs> I really don't use it because it's so loud. But uh, it has one. Um, I replace the grips pretty much on everything I buy. I put some nice soft leather ones on there that uh, are made by Rock Bros that I purchased off of Amazon. Uh, I always prefer having a rear view mirror for safety purposes. It just, you need one. Um, let's see, what else? The handlebars are also adjustable to swivel back and forth besides up and down. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's about it. Uh, let's see, it talked about handlebars, brakes, throttle, power, uh, this thing. All right, I'll talk about the aggressiveness and uh, how I feel about the power behind the 5600 watts provided by these wheels. Well, let me tell you, it's awesome. <laughs> I've had this thing for about a month and a half now, and it, uh, I've had off-road scooters, but nothing with half the power this thing has, and it is just a riot. It really brings a smile to your face. You can get both wheels to peel out when you're already going like 20 miles an hour. It has uh, three gears. Uh, one, two, three, but it also has, uh, you could change from single motor to dual motor, and then this eco turbo button. I believe that's just to cap you out at 15 miles per hour in case state law or wherever law restricts you from going faster than that. So um, I've only gotten it up to about 35 or 40, like I said, but supposedly it does in the 50s. I don't know if I'll ever get that fast, to be honest, but we'll see one day. Um, it, I got mine with road tires on it right for the street, and realizing uh, that I'm preferring to ride it on terrain like this, it was skating all over the place and sliding around, so I put these uh, all-terrain tires on there. They weren't too bad to swap out. Uh, the back wheel comes off completely. There's some wiring harnesses you gotta disconnect on the inside. But the front wheel, the wiring harness doesn't uh, fit through this hole here because there's a clip on there that doesn't fit. So you had, I had to do the front tire within like a foot from the front of the scooter, which it could be done, but it was just a kind of a pain. Uh, let's see. Well, I think that's about all I can think of right now. If you guys have any questions, like I said, ask me in the comments. But I am going to turn on my drone and let it follow me around for a little bit so you can see what this thing looks like in action. Thank you for watching. Okay, here we go. Let's take this thing for a ride, and I'll show you what it looks like. I'm going to start out in first gear. I'm not going to leave the eco on. I'm just going to ride it eco off. But I will tell you when I switched gears just so you can see what it looks like.
All right, so it's in first gear now. I've lost this drone a couple times. Uh, just stayed by a tree and left behind, so I can't go more than about 20, I'd say. But here we go. This is first gear, full throttle. And not much, I'd say like 15 miles an hour or so, but when you do have it in two wheel drive, it still kicks a little bit. But I usually drive around with it in at least second, if not third gear. So I'm gonna put it in second now, I'll leave it in second. And it might not be hard to see the scale of the inclines on these hill, but uh, these hills, but uh, this one's probably about 30 degrees, if I had to guess. So let's see here. I'll let the drone catch up because I've already had it left behind a couple times. So. up there I missed. I'll take it over by some uh, larger hill at the other end of the park here. Of course, there's always cars coming when I want to drive by the street with the drone, so I got a detour here. That's full throttle, second gear from a slow pace. I'll let it catch up a little bit. I'm only going about 10 or so right now. But there is a big hill coming up here that I really like to ride this thing on, and I'm gonna go with that. I'm just gonna put it in three now, so this will be third gear. And every time I wanna make a video, there's people around, but what are you gonna do? All right, so this is, uh, a hill that's a little bit more than 30 degrees. It's probably closer to 40. I like uh, going back here in this corner and then trying to fly up the angle of the hill that's about 45 degrees. And I'll let you see what that looks like. I don't think it would make it in single wheel drive to be honest, but I'm gonna just do it in two wheel drive, third gear. actually didn't want to make it that time, which is kind of odd because usually it flies up that hill. I don't know if I didn't have enough momentum or what, but let's try it again. It also rained a lot here yesterday, so it's pretty mushy grass right now. Yeah, it left a mud trail up the hill. And I'm headed for the roots, so I got a bail on that one. All right, well, that was a terrible demonstration. <laughs> I'm not lying, it usually makes it. Uh, 
I'll try a different angle of it and then I'll just go to a different area of the park so you can see what it looks like out in the open. If it doesn't make it this time, I'll get up. Come on, baby. All right, it made it. Unbelievable. to a different end of the park. I might add, I haven't charged this thing in, uh, let's see, about 20 miles. Like I said, I only charged it twice. I haven't charged it a third time. And I have, I charged it right around 50 miles, and then I charged it again around 80 miles. And right now I'm at 97. So I've got about 17 miles on it with no charge. So I think. It might be a little less aggressive than it normally is uh, going up that hill back there, but also the fact that it's wet and mushy probably has something to do with it as well. Um, I definitely know it wouldn't make it up there and just rear wheel drive on uh, mushy terrain like that. Uh, kind of, if you want to be silly, you could always do one of these. Just, just for fun and spit dirt around the place. Uh, huh. All right, so here's an open field. I'll do a couple circles out there. Waiting up for this thing as usual. This is the Mini 3 Pro by DJI, by the way. It has uh, three speeds and I got it in medium. Uh, once you put it in high speed, the obstacle avoidance sensors get turned off and I don't want to risk this thing hitting a tree or something like that. So that's why it can only keep up with me so fast. Still in third gear, it's two-wheel drive. Like I said, it's a little muddy. It, it is skating around a little bit, but it's still gripping pretty good with these all-terrain tires. I do already have some strictly off-road tires that I'm probably gonna put on uh, once these ones wear down a little bit. Tires on uh, Amazon are only like 30 bucks a piece, so <laughs> that's a cheap price to pay to just have a lot of fun and do burnouts and just use this thing for what it's worth. Fun. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if there's not anything else, else much I could talk about right now. Uh, 
other than uh, I would definitely recommend getting one of these. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, I think it was 1400 bucks plus tax. So compared to other comparable models that have two wheel drive and uh, at least 5,000 watts or more of power for 1500 bucks, you can't go wrong with this thing. Like I said, it's completely solid after all the screws are tightened down and everything like that. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Have a good day.